And it is Dr. Wilcox time. And uh, we are going to guess before you talk. Okay. All right. Dr. Wilcox is talking about the most important nutrient. What do you think it is? I'm going to say iron. Is she right? No. Okay. okay I'm, go I'm going to say salt. Magnesium. Magnesium. Thank you. <laughs> One, you're giving me minerals. Oh. Oh. <laughs> So go to the back of the class. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. All right. This is what we're going to get you all to do. All right. Okay. While you're thinking about it, hold your breath while you're thinking about the right answer. Hold your breath until you come up with the right answer. I see both of you holding your breath. I'm not holding um, my breath. <laughs> Neil, come up with the right answer. Air. Oxygen. Oxygen. Is oxygen considered a nutrient? Yes, it's the forgotten nutrient. Oh, okay. Which is why we didn't know. That's right, we, we forgot. forgot it. Yeah. So <laughs> Neil's been spending too much time holding his breath. That's why he forgot. So people don't think about it, but um, you know, air is what is it? Twenty percent oxygen, nineteen, twenty percent, and we have to have it. We go through oxidative stress and oxidize. We rust. And then we have enzymes in our body that protect us from rusting. It's a constant teeter-totter or seesaw in our bodies. You can't live without it, and too much of it will kill you. But is it that 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 thing they put on my finger every pulse oximeter? To, it, uh, that determines the amount of oxygen in my blood, right? Yes. Okay, I'm usually at ninety-seven, ninety-eight percent. Very good. Okay. And look at look at COVID, for instance. Recent everyone's talking about put put them on oxygen, right? We have oxidative stress. Chemotherapy. It's a big oxidative event where the oncologist trying to save someone's life is is oxidizing, simply put. Um, you're you're killing the bad cells and you're taking out some good cells. So it's a it's a matter of a of a war to uh, n n not kill you from the chemo, but close. <laughs> you know? And um, so <clears throat> it's the forgotten nutrient that we have to have. We have, now the other, uh, kind of putting this together, we have these things in our, uh, trillions and trillions of mitochondria. And it's a popular, there's a word, it's a cell, an organelle that, that's not even part of our body. It's a um, uh, eukaryote a bacterium that was incorporated in our body a jillion years ago. <clears throat> and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, so your mitochondria are the powerhouse, this, the, the, the little organelles that make energy in your body. And when people go through this ketosis and this fasting and when you exercise, you, you want to have oxygen in good supply and the the enzymes that uncouple the oxygen from the red blood cell in good supply so that you can make 36 of these ATP and so adenosine triphosphate and all this stuff goes on in this Krebs cycle it's a, some guy figured it out Dr. Krebs and uh, you get 36 ATP if you don't do that in with what's called aerobic respiration, where you're using oxygen to respire, to b cellularly breathe, you get 36 ATP. If you do it anaerobically without oxygen, you get four ATP. So imagine the price of gas being what it is, that if the efficiency of your gas drops by 90%, you go, holy camoly. <laughs> I not only have to get the gas, but it sucks. It doesn't work. So you want to be aerobically burning and producing energy in your mitochondria. So there's this stuff called hormesis. And hormesis is just a balance. Daniel Sun, wash on, wax off, and yin and yang. It's this, there's this micro stressing that goes on in your body that has to be balanced. And that's hormesis is just a balancing. So now, we, is it something your body does naturally? Yes, and your pH balanced, okay? Uh, okay. And um, and so there's so, but we're talking about oxygen. This this you know in, in a periodic table, <clears throat> oxygen is actually O, right? But we breathe oxygen, which is O two, and two of these got two two molecules couple up, and. Um, and so the splitting of these mo molecules, um, when, which we use with ozone, which we find very therapeutic and helpful in the body, 
um, assist in this dance, this hormesis, this cascade, these micro stressors. Um, the, uh, <laughs> I'm almost so, so that happens from splitting the O2? So ozone? I, uh, ozone makes O3. And, oh, okay. okay, okay. And which is you break up an O2. And so you have the, you have this you know two two things together that are stable, and you break <clears throat> if you break one up then that one O goes to an O two it makes an O three shortly, <clears throat> and then it breaks down. But the the just kind of globally because I'm you know I'm, I'm trying to keep it sure. Sim- sure. Uh, digestible. There's a bunch of pine trees that are in a forest that grew up together, right. and and they they come and harvest all the trees. And um, and then there's two trees that are left sitting there by themselves. And the first little puff of air that comes by knocks them over. You go, how come they survived for all these years in this dense forest? It's because they weren't stressed. They, when a pine tree bends, the bark breaks. The little sap makes it rigid. And so a tree growing up by itself in, in isolation is going to survive the windstorm more so than a tree that grew up with a, in a forest because it wasn't stressed. Right. And so... We go through stresses all the time in our lives. When you exercise, you hurt, and then you break down muscle, and you, you're sore the next day, and then you rebuild, and we know that we're going to hurt after that exercise, but a good thing follows, which is called muscle building and strength and endurance and whatnot. So um, why does the 80-year-old get oxygen, and yet they are still don't uh, have good oxygen levels? Well, there's these enzymes, um, uh, 2,3-D-diphosphoglycerate, D, uh, that uncouples the oxygen from the red blood cells. So it's kind of interesting. Red blood cells don't have mitochondria. So as you get older... As you get older, you don't have the enzyme to... The oxygen to manage, separate. To, to, to efficiently work with the oxygen you have. Okay. And we ate. It's called aging. Okay. Okay? So there's things you can please, do... Please but, don't use that word. Bio, the there's there's yeah. biohacking that's very popular. You have oxygen bars. You have this boost oxygen thing that, that's, that you see now that you can use and get a little sniff of oxygen. The, the, the NFL player takes oxygen on the sideline. But back Let's go talk about that 80-year-old who uh, has um, um, doesn't have the enzyme in the amount that is needed to efficiently manage the oxygen that's on the red blood cell. It, it's interesting that you know, in our brain, in our eyes, our brain, we have trillions of mitochondria, powerhouse, these energy makers, but there's none in the red blood cell because the red blood cell is a bus, and it's carrying four oxygen molecules. And these oxygen molecules have to get to the cell, and they unload with this enzyme and say, "Here, cell, here's your oxygen. Go make your use your mitochondria to make energy." Well, if if there was mitochondria in the red blood cell, the mitochondria would eat up all the oxygen. So it's kind of cool that the good Lord made us in evolution and all these things that happened to make you us could, us. You could produce this as a cartoon. It yeah, would be very yeah, educational. Yeah, yeah, the magic school bus. It, 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 <laughs> it, 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 yes. but, it but, really but, would. But so, so you go, no, oh, so it's, it's a tapestry. It's, it's, it's this m- magical dance that's beautiful when it's done well, and it looks horrible when it's done poorly, and that's called illness and, and disease. And aging. Yes, aging, know, okay. Yeah. But, but there, there's some schools of thought that, you know, people born today will be living to 150 if they subscribe and practice these biohacking things that reduce your aging rate. And um, you want to have, a, you know, a, a long, healthy life and not a short, sick one, okay? So the mitochondria um, that make the oxygen are not present in the red blood cell. That's a good idea because you don't want to have, if your bus has a bunch of food in it to go to the cell, you don't want to have a bunch of hungry kids there eating it before it gets there. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so you go, wow, this is pretty perfect. Um, so we have... Um, um, yeah, the, the, the COVID with, with all this low oxygen levels, it's, and it's kind of like chemo where you're, 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 you're attacking the body and it's buffering, it's hormesis, same words, um, it's process to keep this balance. And, and then if you can't optimize and utilize the oxygen there, then, you know, you die. 
because um, you couldn't even figure it out by holding your breath. What, 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 how, how, what, plastic bag over your head? What do you, you got a, a minute or two to live and then it's over. And so you go, oh yeah. So uh, yesterday I had a 16 year old boy in the office with his mom and I'm, I'm working on his eyes and, uh, and I'm grab his eyelid and it's really floppy. And there's these loose eyelids that happen and it's called floppy eyelid syndrome. And, um, and, um, I'm recommending that this boy who I asked about snoring, and they snore a lot. Usually it's the older person who has sleep apnea. Right. But uh, with other things going on in this boy's life, I'm like, all right, Mom, go to your doc. Tell him your eye doctor said your son has floppy eyelids and, uh, and consider a sleep study. And it's not typical. I don't know what they're going to find with it, but I've been touching eyeballs for 32 years. And um, this kid had some crazy loose eyelids, which might be part of his problem that he has his, this greater health history. 16. Yeah. Um, so um, what other thoughts do I have on this? That's forgotten nutrient. Um, the, um, so I, I look in the back of the eyes, microcirculation, smallest blood vessels in the body. You know, as an eye doctor with cool toys, we can sit here and I can look at a retina and tell you that that's a thinned out retina. And you can see any number of things from... Le- swollen, leaky, thin, weak. Um, you know, you can look at somebody and go, oh my gosh, they're, they're weak. That, that, those POW victims, okay? We all look at them and go, oh my God, there's people that are dying in there. And an eye looks that way. And uh, so um, um, oxygen is important. You don't get it in your, into your, you have a bad environment. You're not putting it in your body. You're not utilizing it well. You're not incorporating it into your red blood cell. Ah, another thought, the use of ozone. Ozone increases the rheology of the blood. The rheology is the ability for a red blood cell to play twister, okay? If you can have a red blood cell, which is donut looking, and it can turn into an eclair, it can turn long and skinny, it can get through smaller pores, holes. And you see that, that you know, something going through a, the snake, the octopus, here you go, the octopus that goes in that small hole, you go, how does it do it? Because it, 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 it contorted itself. So brittle Donuts can't make it through the small hole, but if your blood has, the, has improved rheology and in, in order to, to change its shape, now it can get into the smaller areas. And, and that's something else that is uh, a benefit of this use of ozone, which we do um, use. People get into a chamber and they get this ozone in their body. You can get ozone into your body many, many different ways. And remember, ozone is oxygen in half. So when you say ozone, people are going, oh, my God, ozone, the, 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 the holes in the earth, and I'm going to die. Um, no, it's when you use 100% oxygen to create ozone, you're getting beneficial forms of it versus if you use 20% oxygen and, and the rest of nitrogen and, as I said before, elephant farts, you know, whatever, whatever's in the air, um, you get a lot of negative things that happen there. So oxygen's on the periodic table is O1. We breathe O2 all the time, and you can make an O3, which then converts back to O2s. And it's this tapestry, this dance, this hormesis. Um, low oxygen use of, of this forgotten nutrient um, is causes illness, aging, death. And optimizing it through exercise, through breathing exercises, through through um, using activated oxygen, you, you know you go to the, you go to the doctor and they put a, 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 you know oxygen on your mask on you because you, now you're creating the problem is you can't breathe pure oxygen all the time you, you'll die because you'll have too much oxidation too much rusting of your body and you have to have these buffering enzymes to break it down and find this hormesis. Dr. Wilcox did point out that he is an eye doctor. His office is uh, at the point. Uh, and in between everything that you heard this morning, he does regular eye doctor stuff. Yes, we do. <laughs> um, All day long. Exams, classes, contacts. Uh, but if he sees something, uh, he is prone to make a suggestion that uh, it, it sounds scary. But it's your choice. Yeah. Um, simple as that. It's it's just him making a suggestion because you are probably the most well-read doctor I think I've ever met. Well, that's kind and not true, but um, appreciate it. Um, tell the rest of my brothers and sisters that, that I'm the best. Um, the, the, the disease of being one of 12 kids, you're always fighting for attention. Um, 
but um, the, um, um, the the use of the, my approach and what, what's a good approach is to look at the big picture. And when um, you get sent back to your busy doctor and your specialist and this one, that one, and the other one, they tend to keep into their own little realm and say, no, yeah. that somebody else does that. Yeah. And, and, and that's understandable. We're running a, you know, the, whatever the business is. Um, and I'm a globalist. I'm a uh, look down at, from, from on high at this, this big picture. And whether it's me offering alternative uh, ways to do things or me sending you to those people, which goes on all day in my practice, but counseling people about um, uh, mechanisms and ways they can keep their sight. I've said this before and you don't laugh. No one's ever sat in my exam chair and said, I'm, half, I'm glad I'm half blind. And the seriousness of that it require, makes me, uh, is incumbent upon me to give you choices and give you a little bit of education. And, um, and, and, and so that, that's how I roll. Um, the eye bones connected to the knee bone, the eyes, part of the brain. If you have, if you if you have a sick gut, you have a sick brain, you have sick brain, you have sick eyes and it all ties together. Um, so, and, and then the, the more I know, the more I can share. And in this little talk about oxygen and oxidative stress and the balance and the hormesis, uh, hopefully keep it simple enough and, and that people go, you know, I do need to help my mitochondria out. I do need to help the red blood cells be more pliable. Well, well we got to go. Uh, we got to. Okay. Yeah, we got to feed our mitochondria. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Wilcox, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. I will see you. And again, located down at the point, uh, eye exams, glasses, uh, you name it. Uh, my, uh, migraines. I love the, the talk about migraines, but yeah. uh, we'll see you in a few weeks. It's 728. Good morning. Toyota's National.